some students were asking in class about such things as transparency of materials uh, and adding things, adding specific textures. Um, I think Ryan was interested in scales. So uh, first let me start with some uh, material uh, options. Um, so I'm just going to start with a uh, plane uh, here and we'll draw that out and let's switch to a matte cat gray and edit and I'm just going to go make this poly mesh 3D and hit shift F so I can see the subdivisions in it and I'm going to subdivide this uh, a few times so control D um, Let's take a look, see how fine a mesh we're getting here. Okay, so that's, that's not bad. Um, and then I'm going to uh, hold control and come over to my uh, masking pen and under the stroke, I'm gonna set that to drag rectangle and still holding control and we'll click on the alpha and import an alpha uh, into this. And the one I'm using is just a, it's a fabric one um, that I made. so. Let's, see, let's navigate to that. And oh yeah, this alpha that I have set here. So bring that in. And uh, to work with this uh, you know, as, as is on the mask here, let me shift F to turn that off. If I hold this down and draw that out, I get that. Notice that it's kind of faded out on the edges. That's because my focal shift on my mask is, um, or on my alphas, on my brush, masking brush is in the middle. So I'm going to turn that down to negative 100. So now when I draw that out, I get full coverage. Uh, and it's okay if this is kind of pixelated. Uh, in fact, it's probably better. You know, the fewer, fewer points you're using, the better. Um, and let's see how that looks in terms of coverage. Okay. That's, that's not bad. If it, if it doesn't give you enough coverage, uh, one way to deal with that would be to uh, come to the alpha menu and try inverting it and that might give a little bit better uh, coverage on that but I think um, in this case I'm going to leave it as is and try it and if it works great if not um, we'll come back and deal with some we'll get kind of face onto this thing get near the center and just drag it out till it kind of fills the image there. And then if you want to sharpen it, you can uh, control alt and click in it and that'll sharpen it uh, some. And then I'm going to come down to um, my poly groups and you know, let's turn poly frame on and again use uh, group mask. And so I can do that and that, yeah, that really looks like I'd probably do need uh, more coverage. So I may be able to uh, control click to invert that. And then let's try group mask. Yeah, that gave me a lot more uh, coverage. So now uh, with those uh, as poly groups, let's clear any masking. You could control shift and click if you wanted to keep that bit of them, well, let's undo that, or control shift and click on those if you wanted to keep those. I think I like those others. I think I like this better, so I'm going to control shift and uh, click on those to keep those. And then I'm going to come up to my geometry. And I could do uh, modified apology and delete hidden, uh, but it'll balk because I'm at you know, a higher subdivision level. So uh, I'm just going to go up and um, I could try lowering that, but it might it might cause some odd some oddness uh, there. So, so I'm gonna do that a couple of times to get back to that. And uh, that, so I'm just gonna delete the lower uh, on that, and then come. Uh, now to so yeah, if this is great, if this is fine, then you leave it like that um, and you could bring in a cylinder or another form and use the um, uh, what do they call it the 
uh, matchmaker brush to uh, push that onto a different form. Or, or you could go ahead and sculpt this in place and then run the masking on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, however you want this, this is you know, now geometry. So I can uh, sculpt on this if I want. But it is, it is just planar uh, geometry, essentially. It has no thickness uh, to it. But it will render uh, just fine. Um, let's uh, turn the floor on uh, here. Get centered around on it. And you see, you can even see some of the shadow uh, through it. Uh, so if if this is the way, and let me turn polyframe off there. Uh, if this is the way you want it, then great. Um, if not, uh, then and if it's a little too you kind of pixelated, all rect rectilinear like that, um, we'll undo that sculpt and get it back to flat. Um, let's hide the floor a second. You can just uh, do essentially what we've done before with panel loops. Uh, set your thickness to where you want it. Make sure it's double sided. I'm going to set my loops down to uh, one all the way down and my polish. You can take that all the way down to zero uh, and try it. We'll see what we get there. Yeah, it, yeah you're going to get, oh, uh, sorry. One thing I did not do was, um, or I don't think I did, let's see, was did I come back to modify topology and delete hidden? Let's make sure I did that. And then let's come back to edge loop and panel loop. Yeah, that's much better. But again, you see that may result in um, you know, slightly pixelated qualities. Uh, and But if you turn the polish to one, I might just have to type that in, it's so fine. Uh, and then run that, now you'll get you know, a little bit of, of polish on it. And you can play with the setting on the uh, maintain form uh, here and see if we get any better. Yeah, that's actually much better results. So um, that turned uh, with a filled circle gives me a little bit better results. So now I have geometry. You know, it's, it's, it's going to increase your uh, count based on how many subdivision levels you have and um, you know, just how much geometry uh, you have in total. But uh, you know, it, it uh, is a fairly uh, fast way to work. And again, this is all now still sculptable. Uh, and let's see, let's append a, let's append a form in here. I'll just go with the cylinder. And get my brush, my move tool there. Rotate that around. Make it a little bit wider. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a little bit taller too. subdivide it up a few times. Um, so now I could switch back to my whoop, um, make sure I don't have anything masked. Switch back to this mesh here and uh, bring up the uh, and get bring up the brush menu, get the matchmaker brush and just run that. Uh, cross it. You can see now I can conform it to whatever's under it. Didn't have to be um, you know, like that. I could just rotate this thing around a little bit. Switch back to the yeah, now run the matchmaker on it. 
Let me see, I can make it conform around that. Um, So in the next video, I will show uh, a separate method uh, for, do, for doing this, one that gives you a little more control over the type of geometry uh, you get out of this. And again, this, a lot of this is going to depend on your masking. You know, I was using a fairly random uh, pattern in that mask. You could try masks with a little more regular pattern. Grid, grid masks uh, work uh, fairly well. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, continue this uh, in the next video.